So in this video, we said that we're going to compute the efficiency under the private education. We'll do it on a graph as well. So let's go over here to the right and do so. So we'll have the, we'll have the relationship again between the dollars and the quantity. So dollars and the quantity. Hope you appreciate those straight lines again. My artistic skills are growing by the day. Now, what else do we need is the data. So the data is over here. The data is over here like that. We're going to crop it and paste it. So crop it and paste it over here. Now let's plot it on this graph. So what do we have? We have the marginal benefit, which is 100 minus 2 times the quantity. The intercept is 100. The quantity intercept would be 50. We connect the two dots and that will give our marginal benefit. What else do we have? We have the marginal external benefit, which is 25 minus a half times the quantity. So we have over here, let's say 25 intercept. The quantity intercept is 50 once again. So 25 uh, minus a half Q, that's our marginal external benefit. And now because this is, this is our private education, by the way, let's write over here private education to know that we are following it. Uh, we also have to incur the marginal cost. That's 20. So the marginal cost would be would be 20 over here. 20 like that. That's our marginal cost. Now, um, we, we can calculate our uh, gains and losses. So let's see. Before that, because this is private, because this is private education, we know we have a private optimal level and we calculated two videos ago, somewhere over here, the private optimal level under uh, this case would be 40 units of education. So 40 will be over here. We plot the 40. This is going to be 40 units of education. Now what's going to be the consumer surplus is the area underneath the marginal benefit curve and the marginal cost. So it will be this triangle over here. This is going to be our consumer surplus, which is a half times this height, which is 100 minus 20. So that's a height of 80 times this length, which is 40. So 80 times 40, that's equal to 3200 divided by 2, that's equal to 1600. So that's a gain, 1600, that's a plus, a positive. Okay, what else do we have? We have marginal, we have total external benefits. And that's the area underneath the marginal external benefits until the level of 40 units because we produce only 40 units. So the total external benefits is going to be this one over here. This is the total external benefits. How can we calculate the area of that? Well, it would be wise to deconstruct it in two shades, into a triangle and a rectangle. So we would like to know what's going to be the level of the marginal external benefit at the quantity of 40 units. Because now what we can see is that we will have, we will have this triangle. So we'll calculate the area of this triangle over here and the area of the rectangle underneath. So let's start with the triangle. What's this area now? How can we calculate it? Well, our first task is to find out the level of marginal external benefit when the quantity equals to 40. And that's going to be pretty fast because we know, we know the marginal external benefit function That's 25 minus one over two Q. If quantity equals to 40, then the marginal external benefit equals to 25 minus a half times 40. So it's 25 minus 20 and that would be five, meaning that the level of the marginal external benefit at the quantity of 40 units of education is equal to five dollars. So we have five over here. Now with this in mind, we can we can calculate the external benefits because we will have the area of the triangle. Now let me change colors to, to, to keep track of them. That's one over two times this height and the height is 25 minus five. So that's a height of 20 uh, mu uh, multiplied with the length and the length is going to be 40. So 40 times 20, that's 800. Actually, why am I adding it? We have to add also the area of the, um, of the rectangle. So plus the area of the rectangle, which is this one. And this will make up the entire total external benefits. We're just deconstructing the uh, graph. So this area over here, that's five times 40. So plus five times 40. Now, what's that going to be? Well, we have over here one over two times 20 times 40. That's 800 divided by two, which is 400 plus five times 40. That's another 200, 400 plus 200. That's equal to 600. That's also a gain. So that's also a gain. Do we have any more gains? Well, the price equals to the marginal cost. So there's no producer surplus, meaning that this is it. We have no subsidy, no cost. So the overall efficiency is going to be the sum of 1600 from the consumer surplus. Let's write it over here. 
that overall the efficiency is equal to 1600 plus 600 from the from the externalities plus 600 and that's equal to 2200 this is the efficiency under private education and the efficiency under free education that we saw in the previous video is 2125 that's 75 dollars less efficient so the efficiency under the free education is lower than the efficiency under the private education why is that the case because under the free education consumers students don't take into account any cost so they don't really think about their decision to, of, of investing in the education they just overdo it over consume it some people are not getting are not getting um, or better said better said under the private education consumers students are gonna think whether the value they get from education is worth their cost but under free education they don't have to make that decision so that leads to too much too much investment in education because it is subsidized so what we can see here is that the private education would be a better option than the free education given this data but we also know that if there was a subsidy then we would be able to get to the social optimal level which we saw two videos ago hope this all makes sense and we are done